talk fast. I have a lot of notes I have to get through here. Uh, for those who don't know me, I'm Jim Garman. I'm the president of the Historical Society and the town historian. And uh, all of our board is here because we had a board meeting before we had this meeting, so we trapped them. I'd like to welcome everyone to the 78th annual meeting of the Portsmouth Historical Society and the 379th anniversary of the founding of our town. Maybe we'll make it to 400. The intention of the meeting tonight is to give the membership a view of where the Historical Society is today and where it's going, uh, where we hope to go in the future. I have two separate presentations on that um, that I'll get into eventually here tonight. First, we have a couple of board reports, though, for you. Uh, at our board meeting in May of this year, the officers for 2017 were elected, and they're listed in the program. Um, many of them were re-elected. A special note, though, is our new corresponding secretary, who is Jane Ruggiero. Jane was a very active member and quite a force in the 375th anniversary that we had in 2013. And we're happy to have her joining our board. Take a stand, stand up, Jane. That's Jane. Thank you. Thank you. The next item is our treasurer's report. Dave Foucher is our treasurer, and uh, he has a report to give to you on the, for the annual uh, financial status of the organization. He's been treasurer for one year, and he's done a very good job of getting it all organized somehow. I don't know. Dave. I'll take over credit, and you can have uh, two hours of my talking this evening. I hope it's not too long for you. <laughs> <laughs> this is the annual report here, and hopefully you've got a copy of uh, if not, let me just summarize what it says. If you put all the accounts together, uh, we had a very successful year financially. If you combine all the accounts, we went from a fund balance last year of 32985 to a balance this year of $56,265, an increase of $23,280, or 71% increase. However, I have a caution, and we had several one-time or non-occurring events that contributed to this increase. Specifically, we received some non-recurring grants of $10,950 and a bequest of $8,333. In addition, we paid $3,010 as a down payment for exterior painting, which is part of a non-recurring grant. If we were to remove the one-time and non-recurring events, the combined effect is to lower the net gain, net gain from $23,280 to $7,700. Fund balance increase then would be 21% over the prior year's fund balance. So it's still positive. I just want to give you a summary, and that's the length of my talk. Any questions? Good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Dave. At this time, I would like to call on our retiring corresponding secretary, Joe Munch, uh, for an annual membership report. Got lots of numbers for you, and the numbers are pretty good. Act. <laughs> uh, well, I'm happy to report that we currently have 571 memberships at this time. And our memberships are made up of <coughs> uh, different levels, patrons, um, corporate memberships, contributing, family, individual, uh, life and honorary, and some other. So we, we're totaling 571. And why that number is important is that in 2014, I looked back on some of our records, and we had 114 memberships. We now have 571. That's an increase of 400,000, 400%. And that can be attributed to like all our board members and our other members who are getting the word out to say we're having some exciting programs, we're doing a lot of different things, and we really want to make this organization grow so that we're preserving Portsmouth history and just, you know, making, um, you know, Portsmouth a better place to live. So I think we should all be congratulated for that 400% increase over three years. It's, it's pretty phenomenal. That's great. Um, and then just to um, let you know, like, we're, we are currently um, continuing this effort, and just in the month of June, we've had, uh, let's see, 61 new, uh, renewing and new memberships in the month of June, 61. So we have the momentum and we want to keep it going. So, and I thank everyone for coming tonight. Thank you, Joe. Thank you.
Bill, come back. Come back. Bill, come back. Come back. Come back. I got it. Okay. Jill gets a special honor tonight for her retirement because Jill, some people might not be aware of this fact, was the president of this organization from 19, I wrote it down, 1989 to 1992. And she's been corresponding secretary for a long time as well. And so for her, we have a plaque, which is a copy of the Portsmouth Compact. These are for sale, by the way. And, but we're giving her hers. And it says, <laughs> for exceptional service to the society, the member of the board of directors and the, and the office of corresponding secretary and president of this organization, given the 19th day of June, 2017. There you Thank go. Thank you very much. Congratulations. <laughs> You've done a great job. You really have. Absolutely. We're really lucky. Okay. Page two. Moving along here. <laughs> so the society is, is really moving along well. We're doing a lot. We're having a lot of programs going on. We just had our board meeting before this meeting, and Doug Smith has created about six, seven different projects, our operations between now and September. So it's really, things are really moving along well. I'm going to talk, to, actually, in, with three parts. The first part is where the society is today. The second part is we have a survey on our website, and I want to give you some of the results of that. And the third part is where we're going. So that's, that's my plan. And I have to read most of this because I don't have it memorized. Anyway. OK, the organization was created in 1939. And it came out of a ceremony that was held in 1938, which was the 300th anniversary of, um, of Portsmouth. And they had a big celebration. It wasn't quite as big as the celebration that took place in 1936 when Rhode Island celebrated its 300th anniversary, and much of that was focused on Providence, obviously. But in 38, we had our own. And in that the committee that created that, the chairman of that committee was uh, William H. Vanderbilt, who happened to live next door at Oakland Farm, and who also happened at that time to be the governor of the state. The, this church building, built in 1865, was donated to the society in 1940 when the congregation of the Christian Union Church that had been here for, uh, well, since probably about 18, what is it, Mars, 35, somewhere around there. There have been two church buildings here. This was the second one, but it was built in 1865. And that congregation dissolved. So, uh, and they gave this building to the Historical Society. I've been a member of the Historical Society since 1974, which is 43 years. Uh, and I, I found something the other day that said I was the vice president in 1976. I can't believe that, but maybe, I guess I was. Anyway, we've really come a long way over a series of presidents over time, including Richard and Ginny Long, Jane Gerhardt, Steve Boscarino, Jill Munch, and especially our president emeritus, Herbert Hall. Each generation of members also continued greatly the good work of this organization, just, that, just as we do. I mean, look at this room itself. Renovated, completion of renovation was done in 1996. And it, it, there's a before picture. I think it's back on the wall. Yeah, it's back on the wall there somewhere. You can look at it. It was pretty run down. And even now, 21 years later, it really looks great. And most of the work was done by one contractor a man by the name of Woody Andre from Bristol. And when you look up at that ceiling, think about that. He painted that by hand. It's a tin ceiling, and he painted all of that, plus a lot of other work that he did, including the Lord's Prayer up here behind me, which is pretty spectacular, too. So over time, we've really kept the organization going. Again, it's gone for, for 79 years now, and that's really pretty impressive. So. You heard the numbers that we have as far as membership. We're not satisfied with 571. We want at least 1,000. And we're going to keep working and doing things in order to show people that, that we are an important part of this town. A part of that, too, though, and what keeps this organization going is volunteers. We need help. 
There are a lot of different ways you can help, and, and we really want to have people um, help us with being a docent, and we have a clipboard I'm going to pass around if anybody wants to sign up to be a docent. Docents are here from 2 to 4 on Sunday afternoon, and if you're not really an expert on Portsmouth history, and not many people are, uh, probably nobody is, uh, that doesn't matter because you'll be here with a veteran tour guide, and you're a tour guide for people who come. And uh, that's what we need help for, and there'll be somebody experienced here every Sunday to, to help with that. So if you'd like to sign up to be a docent, I will pass this clipboard around and let you sign up. So we need help, we need volunteers, and that's what keeps this organization going. Most of you realize probably that the town of Portsmouth is a town of neighborhoods. And that, that, you know, Clements Market is about the only center that we have. It used to be NATO's pharmacy, but not anymore. Um, and so what we need to do is have people go out to their neighbors and encourage them to become members uh, of the organization and to come and help us out. We have a great collection of archives of Portsmouth history here. Uh, and uh, we need help organizing that. The Curators Committee meets every Wednesday morning at 9 o'clock and they do a lot of sorting and numbering and cataloging and that's, that's an important part of what we do as well. Plus they put together a display that you will see downstairs of uh, uh, the, the theme for this year's display is out of the attic. And these are things that are not really out of our attic but out of our archives and out of other people's attics as well. And we're always looking for donations as well, as long as they relate to Portsmouth or at least Rhode Island history. We have a great board of directors, and I hope I can remember to mention them all. Doug Smith up here, who does our programs and does a lot with our programs, um, is really active with that and does a lot of the public relations as well. Nancy Crawford over here has a committee of, uh, of curators, including Ann Burns, Nancy Smith, Johanna Hall, Lois Ryan, Marge Webster, and Rich and, uh, Rich and Gloria Schmidt. We have the cemetery project going that you heard a little bit about, and the cemetery project is really going to get off the ground this uh, next month in July, and we need people to help with that. Dave Gleason is going to organize a historic house uh, project as well to do an inventory of those, and hopefully we'll be able to work out a system of having markers on the houses with their dates on them. I've always been really impressed by, by Westport Point. You drive down that street there and every house has a marker on it. And some of them are 1902, 1910. A lot of them are 1730 and 1740. And that's really kind of impressive. And that, that makes people much more aware of the historic nature of a town. And that's what we're trying to build. We have a great buildings and grounds committee, which includes Mike Pagliarani, Dave Duggan, Dave Gleason, Tim Ryan, and Gary Gump. We have uh, a, a, the expert in audiovisual website, all that stuff. Audiovisual Rich Talipsky, uh, who does all the videos and everything, and there's just a, and a lot of the PR as well. We have our town librarian as an ex officio member, Carolyn Magnus, who also we work a lot of coordination and cooperation with the library. I think that's a really important uh, coordination that we have in this town. I think that's great. And, of course, one other person, I guess I better mention him, he'll get upset if I don't. Uh, Gary Gump, up here, who does everything. Uh, he just, he's all around. He works on grants, he's on the Building and Grounds Committee, he does about a dozen other things, and, and really has done a great job. We, we didn't have any grants for a couple of years, and we got, what, three this year? Three this year, and those things are tedious to, to create, and anxious when you're waiting for the mail to come in to see whether you got them or not. But, we were able to get, for example, for the painting of the outside of the building, a $45,000 grant from the uh, Rhode Island Historic Preservation and Heritage Commission. Uh, we also got a grant from the 1772 Foundation for $10,000 for more painting. Some of that's going to be on the inside. And we even got a grant for $972, I think it was, um, from the Ott Foundation for storage cabinets. So they, they're all different levels. And Gary sits on top of all those things all the time. He's done a great job with that. So, in summary, the Historical Society is in good hands. Uh, we have tons of energy and we need more volunteers. I'm gonna say that more than once tonight. 
We have a survey on the website, and uh, Rich Tulipsky has, has coordinated all that and, and given, me some, given me some numbers and so on. Uh, and it's sort of, you know, what do you think about this, about this, or Saudi, et cetera, some of the questions. So I'm going to give you a short summary of some of the things that we've heard on the uh, website in the, the survey. Almost every responder on the survey feels that Portsmouth history is very important, as are all of our museum buildings. And for those, if anybody's not been here before, we have three museum buildings here. Uh, we have this building, again, a church in 18, built in 1865. We have the old town hall behind me, which was uh, built in about 1830 or so and used as a town hall, and later used as the fire department. It was, all the fire wagons were in there as well. And then we have the southernmost school over here, which is probably the oldest school building in Rhode Island. It's certainly one of the oldest in the country. It was built in 1725, moved about three times and finally settled here in the 1950s. And I just warn you, if you haven't been in the schoolhouse, when you go in the schoolhouse, don't be taken aback by the fact that we have a mannequin schoolmaster there. And he's behind the door, sort of. So when you walk in there, sometimes people go like that. You know, they didn't realize somebody was standing there. But it's only a mannequin, so don't, don't panic if you have that experience. 72% of the survey feel that some small parts of the town budget should support the society. Only 9% disagree with that. This year we're hoping, and the financial meeting is coming up, when is it, Linda, next week? Yeah, next week. Uh, we're hoping to get a, a grant from the town of $7,000, uh, which is a, an increase from what we've had before. And we put it to good use, believe me. We were asked on the survey that we should do more PR. I shouldn't tell Doug that, because Doug spends about eight hours a day doing PR. Uh, but we do what we can. Uh, he's always writing press releases, and, and um, I feel we really get good press coverage for all the activities that we have. Uh, we've been really fortunate that way. A uh, question was uh, that we should, uh, an answer was we should have more school involvement. We think so too. We want to get kids in here. And we have this year, we had the third graders here from Melville School, 75 of them, last Thursday. They were here in three groups, and they had, oh, an hour, hour and a half tour. And uh, we, we dosed into that, and it was kind of fun to see the kids, and, and their, their questions were really terrific from them. Um, so we had that, and we also had a trivia contest, Portsmouth History Trivia Contest in March. Now we had one between the middle school and the high school, and they, they each could have as many teams as they wanted. There were two middle school and four high school, four or five. Anyway, and um, the middle school, one of the middle school teams came out in first place, so that was kind of exciting. The, um, so, and, and Doug and I went to the middle school last Friday and presented the plaque that's going to be a rotating plaque to the school uh, for the history trivia contest. The only problem I had was that I wrote 116 questions for the trivia contest, and then some newspaper man, I won't mention his name, put all the answers in the <laughs> newspaper too. <laughs> so I started writing some more <laughs> for the second round, which was an adult Portsmouth history trivia contest. And, uh, but that, those were really fun. We had a good time with those. And uh, uh, it, it really brought some kids' interest in history. They didn't get 100%, but, uh, but they did well. And, and what was interesting was the competition. Uh, the competition was that between the first two teams and the school one, uh, the difference was one point. Uh, and uh, so they were close. And, and Jane Ruggiero's son came there as a team of one from the middle school, and he did really well. Uh, he came, what, third or fourth? He was right up there. Amazing. So, uh, we think we, we have some school involvement, and most of those are, are new this year. The third graders have come for several years. But we want to do more, and we want to get kids here, and that's, what we're, that's one of our major objectives. Get them away from their spinners and have them come do some history. Okay. Um, preserve, promote history documents and photographs. We're doing that. It's just a slow process because nothing was done for the first 40 years of this organization except to acquire things. And the cataloging of all the archives and things like that is a, a big job. And, and we're working hard on that, the curators. And the curators always can need more help. And again, 
As with the docents, you don't have to be a Portsmouth history expert to do those jobs. We, got, we have good teachers, and they'll really uh, you know, help a lot. We have uh, a, another problem that we're considering, and, and is a problem for us, is more parking. Uh, we do own the lot behind the building, and, and we do park there. Fortunately, we haven't, it, 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 I don't think it ever becomes a swamp out there. Uh, but you know, someday in the future, maybe we'll be able to have gravel out there or maybe even asphalt. But we're working on that. One other thing as far as parking goes, though, and this is a fairly easy solution for us, a lot of what we do is on Sunday. And in this shopping center over here, nothing is open on Sunday. Not a single place there. I'm really amazed the pizza place isn't. Um, and so we're trying to figure out a good way to have a step down from that parking lot onto our property. And we tried it once, and then somebody built it back up. Uh, but anyway, we're, going, we're hopeful to have more parking over there. We, don't, we can't do that other than on Sunday, though, I'm afraid, because we'll get in trouble. More seats at the lectures. Well, one of the problems, I, I, as most of you know, I do a lot of lecturing on our history. And, and we have them in the library. One of the problems we have with this building is we don't have heat up here, except in the summer. Then we really have heat up here. Uh, it's really, really gets hot. Um, so a lot of our lectures are at the library. We're really lucky to have that location. And it, it, the seating is limited. I will say that during the 375th, I did 10 lectures over the, over the year. And probably about six or seven of those I did twice because we had waiting lists, and, and we, so we did them twice. We want to have them here. The big problem here is handicap accessibility, and we're working on that too. I'll talk about that in a minute. But anyway, more seats at the lecture is something we really would like to be able to provide. More articles in the newspapers. Um, in between 1979 and 1981, I wrote 27 articles on local history for the Sakonet Times, as it was at that time. And we're working on, uh, I'm working on talking to Rich about this to put those articles on the website. Uh, so we're going to have more articles that way. Uh, and we can do, I can do more articles someday when I have time to sit down and write history uh, to, uh, to promote local history more. I've written six books on local history, and we do sell two of them downstairs uh, in the museum. That's the only two that are left, unfortunately. Right. They've all gone. But anyway, I kept two copies of each for myself. Anyway, we, so, and hopefully I can do some more writing, and, and we'll, we'll be able to, to do more with that. More museum hours was a request on the survey. We want that too. And in fact, not many years ago, the museum was open on Saturday afternoon and Sunday afternoon. And we'd like to do that. We need docents. We need people who can guide people around. Again, we need volunteers. So that, that is certainly a, high, a fairly high priority on our list to be able to open more often. The museum itself is, is not really a research museum. Uh, we have a history center at the library, which has a lot of digitized information there. We have a lot of stuff here, but it's not, we're not open enough for somebody to be able to come here and spend the day. Uh, and it would be nice to do that, but we're, we're taking the next step beyond that of trying to digitize as much as we can. And then you know, we can put it on the website, and people can do their research that way. A lot of, a lot of local historical societies do that. Little Compton has a really good one on their website. Uh, and you can, you can buy copies of pictures from them and things like that. That's really an excellent website. We're going to do more with that. Seek more grants, somebody said. Shouldn't tell Gary that. He's been working hard on the grants that we have gotten. Uh, and, and obviously, we want more. This, the renovation of this building, outside and inside, in, it finished in 1996, was a result of, a, uh, of several grants that added up to $275,000. Big money. Okay. And th that's what, you know, we're working on everything from 900 and something to 45,000 right now. More corporate members was another request. Uh, Rich Stolipsky and, and Gary Gump sent out a notice, a letter, about three weeks ago to the co all the corporations in Portsmouth. And we're the responses are trickling in. Uh, corporate membership is, is $75. And if you look on the back of your program, you see the ones that we have so far. 
uh, and their logos. And we, do, we put their logos on our website as well. And so it's, I think it's important that, that we indicate who the corporate sponsors are and again, give them some press and, and give them some work, I hope, for some of the things we do. We also have recently joined the Portsmouth Business Association and so we can schmooze there for a while too with some of these companies and we're gonna do that as well. So that's where we are now. Briefly, I'm gonna say where we're going next, so uh, bear with me before my voice goes. I feel like Marco Rubio we gave that speech and had to reach for the water. Okay, the future of the society. As an organization dedicated and devoted to the past, where do we see ourselves going? Uh, this is a, a challenge. We do have a long-range planning committee that is working on you know, what the society is going to look like 5, 10, 15 years from now. And hopefully we'll, we'll have some heavy-duty information on that soon that we can share with everybody. The biggest project we have, and the one that's going to cost the most money, is to make this building, especially make this room, handicap accessible. And we have, we're working on that. We have a, an architectural uh, person from Roger Williams University who specializes in ADA accessibility, uh, Melissa uh, Hutchinson. And she has done drawings of the building uh, for us, and she recently did some drawings that indicate how we could put an elevator inside this building. And the plans, the tentative plans on the drawings, is to put it in that corner over in the, the uh, northeast corner of the building. It's going to take some modifications of the building. And one of the problems that we have with this building, this building's on the National Historic Register. And we have to be very careful about what we do in terms of um, changing the outside. Uh, modifying the outside. We have to get a few permissions here and there. Mostly from, locally it's done in the state, it's done by the Rhode Island Historic Preservation and Heritage Commission, uh, who are the people who gave us the, the $45,000 to paint the building. We th we've gone through all kinds of iterations of attaching it to the back somewhere, attaching it to the stairway that's over here, and the, the real best solution in terms of maintenance and everything else is to put it inside. And that's something we want to do, and that's something that's going to cost a lot of money. So, but we're, again, we have the drawings, we have a pretty good idea of what we need, and you know, it's just, you talk to different people and you get different prices, so I, I, I don't want to estimate how it's going to be. I've, I've seen everything from $50,000 to $250,000, so I, I'm not sure exactly what that's going to cost us. But we would like to do that because then we can rent out this space to different community activities that want to have a meeting of, this seats about 220 people. And it's one of the biggest, you know, other than churches, it's one of the biggest halls uh, in the town. And we'd love to have heat up here, and we'd love to have handicap accessibility. And, there's some, and, and I would warn some of you, when you go downstairs, be careful on that stairway. It's really, it's a little hairy uh, getting down. And there's no real handrail to hold on to. Some of us old folks are aware of that. Okay, so we hope to be able to do that uh, in the near future. That's, again, long range, but long range maybe in, in four or five years. We would hope to be able to do it by that time. We're going to inventory with the leadership of Gary Crosby, who's a member of our board. We're going to inventory the uh, historic cemeteries in the town. Uh, as some of you may know, the town council is, is considering the idea of giving people a little bit of a tax break for maintaining the cemetery, some of which are in people's front yards uh, and uh, side yards, and some aren't maintained. Not many of them are maintained very well. Some of them are. But, and some of them have markers in them and some of them just have stones in them. Uh, there's a lot of them around though. And because in the past, in the 18th century, uh, people buried grandpa out in the backyard. And then they just walled it off and then they had a family cemetery. And uh, the, the state of Rhode Island has done a survey of historic cemeteries throughout the state. And we have, I forget how many in this state, in this town, about 10, I think it is. Uh, and, and, but there are a lot more than that. So that's a big project. Also, as I mentioned, the inventory of the historic houses. I, my, the first book I wrote was on the historic houses of Portsmouth, and I, I did it in 1974. And at that point, I said I, I only dealt with houses that were 100 years old or more. And I, I cataloged probably about, I don't know, 70 or 80 of them. And uh, 
and now if you go back 100 years, there's a lot more. We have a lot of old historic houses in this town. So that's another project that we want to really keep in our long-range planning. The, uh, we're, we're going to paint the inside of the building as well as the outside, and contracts are being written for that, updated for that, I guess I should say. And uh, so that's a plan. Of course, we can't do that while the museum's open, so that probably will be done once we get enough money. Uh, to, that'll be done in, uh, in, after October, in late October and beyond over the winter because it needs it. We had a serious problem here with water. Uh, what was that? Summer of, summer of what? 14? 15. And we had water leaks that, that came in in that corner of the building and it was a problem. And uh, the repairs were done and you don't even notice it, but it does need painted inside down there. So that's on the plans too. And finally, uh, the last long range planning is to open the museum more. And again, to do that, we need help. And, and we can't rely on 16 people to totally run this whole operation. We need a lot of volunteer help and we hope that some of you will, will join us in that regard. So in conclusion, we hope to increase our membership even further. We have lots of programs coming up. There's a lot of activities that are scheduled for this organization. We want full house attendance at them. I gave a lecture one time on uh, Sandy Point Farm and I went down to the barns and I put up posters all over the place and, and we had 150 people in this room, uh, which overwhelmed me quite a bit. But, uh, but I like doing that and I have great personal archives as well as what we have here uh, to use for making presentations. So we really want to be, make, make ourselves more visible. We're certainly more visible than we were four or five years ago. And uh, we want to be even more visible. And all of you can help spread the word of the great work that we're doing as a society. Talk to your neighbors. Talk to your friends. And uh, you know, work with us. Work for us. We really appreciate it. That's pretty much I have as far as the presentation goes. I'll be happy to answer questions. Uh, if you have questions, please. Speak loudly because we're videoing this for uh, beyond Access TV and probably, or at least on uh, YouTube. So you have to speak up if you have a question. Questions from anybody? Anything I've been talking about? I didn't cover everything. Did I? Yes, Corinne. Um, I know in the, in, you went over the plans for the future. In that, I didn't really hear too much about uh, social, increasing the social media presence. Is there a plan for that? We do. We have, we have Facebook. We have a, the website. And uh, as I said before, Rich does a really great job of putting anything we give him on the website. And so there's a lot of that kind of stuff. As I, you know, we can get all, a lot of our archives on the website. That's easy. And, and we do look forward to doing that in the future, yes. And if you go to the website now, there's, there's a number of things that you can, reports and biographies and some of that stuff that you can find quite a bit there now. But there will be more, guarantee. Yeah, Facebook too. Well, that Facebook. Was going to be my question. I was thinking, you know, Snapchat and Instagram, Facebook, and plans for that. Any of you oh, young okay. people want to answer that? I don't know. I have Facebook. Yeah, we have Facebook. I don't do any of the other ones. I don't like Snapchat. We can do Instagram. Yeah. That's one of the reasons why we don't have. And Gloria Smith has a blog too that we a lot of stuff on it. Um, as you can tell from this group, we're a little bit old, and we need some more young people. Uh, I mean, I'm on Facebook. That's about it, I think. Are you volunteering to help? <laughs> <laughs> I realized halfway through the question. <laughs> Great. Oh, uh, we appreciate that, Corinne. Any other questions anybody has or comments? Happy to, to you know, if you have any questions about those survey comments, anything you want to uh, add to that, add your opinion. Really, it's very easy to take that survey. You just have to go to the website and look for the survey and, and you know, help us out that way. It's anonymous. We don't really 
you know, care where the sources are coming from. Um, but we really want to be able to help people and, and educate them. We get phone calls, a lot of us get phone calls all the time about, you know, what do you know about the Almies in Portsmouth? Or what do you know about the Shermans in Portsmouth? Which are, you know, really huge projects to, to get into. Uh, we get a lot of genealogy and uh, we have some people who are really good at it uh, digging things out. Uh, but there's a lot, of, a lot of sources that way available here, uh, as well as photographs. We have a pretty decent photograph collection as well. Yes, Mark. Jim, for the near future, could you go over the next events that we're going to be having? I'll let Doug do that. He just gave it to us in the meeting, so go ahead. I'd be you got to stand close to the microphone. The next one coming up is July 6th. Uh, we have a special edition of the Declaration of Independence in Portsmouth. It's kept at the Portsmouth Town Hall. We're gonna, we're gonna uh, have it on display in the town council chambers on the 6th of July uh, from 5.30 to 7 o'clock. Jim's gonna give a brief talk on the importance of it. Uh, I think it was like a 1776 or 7 version, right? Well, it was printed just a few days after the original, and uh, one was made for each town in the state. And, and so it's a second generation copy. It's worth a lot of money. Uh, and uh, there was one in each town in the state. There are, I think there are four of them still around. One's in another town, and the other two are in private collective collection. And you don't want to tell the town council it's worth a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> It's uh, theirs. <laughs> <laughs> so that's on the 6th of July. By the way, you go to our website, and there's a list of all this coming up. Uh, the next one's on July 23rd. Uh, this is a Sunday. We're open from 2 to 4. We're having a uh, celebration of Ann Hutchison's birthday. Uh, and it's going to be fairly low-key, but Jim will say a few words about Ann Hutchinson and her importance to Portsmouth. Uh, Gloria Schmidt will talk a little bit about the women that accompanied the founders, and they were going to have birthday cake <laughs> cut up for Ann Hutchinson. That's on the 23rd from 2 to 4. Uh, August 6th, another Sunday. We're trying to do things on Sunday when folks are here and they go through the museum too. Uh, the Portrait of the Art Guild, uh, they're going to have their artists down here actually painting different scenes and possibly some of our buildings. Uh, so you can come down and look over their shoulder, see what they're doing. Uh, some of the artists will probably have some of their paintings, you know, laying around that they could sell you. Uh, but it's a good chance to kind of, it, you know, this is a chance for us to partner with some of these local community groups that are also involved in cultural things. And it's kind of neat. Uh, so that'd be August 6th, tags here. August 8th. Uh, by that time in August, hopefully it'll be warm. Right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, We've got a, a lecture by Fred Zillian, local, uh, one of our local historians, uh, on life on Aquidneck Island during the Revolutionary War, which personally is, that's a, I really want to hear about that. Mm -hmm. I think it'd be very interesting. It's at the library, so it'll be air conditioned from 6 to, I hope, right? From 6 to 7.30, <laughs> unless it breaks off in history, uh, on <laughs> August 8th. Uh, September, we're working on a Harvest Social uh, what we're looking at is maybe going to Greenville, drinking wine, and talking about history. It doesn't get any better than that. <laughs> so, uh, I don't have a date for that yet. We're working on it. And then October 8th, this is one I really recommend everybody come to. It's called, we do it with the Portsmouth Community Theater. It's called History Comes Alive. And the community theater group will provide four characters from Portsmouth's history. And we'll have guides that will take groups around and introduce them to the character. The character will talk about what they did and about what was Portsmouth was like when they were here. And, and it's different characters than they met last year. Mm -hmm. So if yeah. you went last year, come again. Yeah. Because you'll meet different And by the way, I should recognize that Gloria writes a lot of the script for all this stuff. Right. She's, she's right in the middle of all that. Anyway, it's a lot of fun. It's going to be October 8th, normal hours here, 2 to 4. It's a Sunday again. But that's one that's going to be fun to come to. The first time I came to the historical society, in fact, 
Gloria was my tour guide or something, uh, I, I saw one of those. I thought it was a really great way to get to know Portland history. Uh, that's all we have through October, but uh, we're, we're hoping to do a Christmas uh, fundraiser, essentially, but it's going to be with the Newport Coursers. Navy uh, Coursers. Oh, is there the Navy, Navy Coursers? Boy, that's my Navy roots. Okay. <laughs> Captain. Yeah, the Navy <laughs> Coursers who are, are, are going to do this for us at St. Barnabas, we hope. And it's going to be during Christmas sometime in December. Eight. December 8th, excuse me, that's right. Uh, and we'll be getting more information out, out on that as it goes. It's going to be our, an annual fundraiser. But I'll tell you, it doesn't get any better than listening to the choristers sing Christmas songs. Right. So that's another one. We have a lot of exciting stuff going on. Uh, and please come and please talk to your neighbors, talk to your friends, talk to businesses. One of the things, you know, Jim mentioned how our membership has grown. Here's, why, here's another reason why we need members. Every time you go in for a grant, these companies look and see what kind of community support that these organizations have. And believe me, we're, we're back in the day when we had 100 people in all of Portland. That's not a lot of support. Okay, it's growing. But talk to your neighbors. 15 bucks for an individual membership is nothing. Get people to join just to help us out, just to show that the community is supporting this organization. That's that's why I asked. Thanks, Doug. Okay. Great. Other questions, comments? No? Yep. One other thing I'd just like to mention that, that's kind of exciting. That, Stay with you. you know, Jim talked about the importance of school kids, getting school kids involved in this. And one of the things that we, over the, the past year, we've got Tim Ryan here, who's a social studies teacher at the high school. So now we have a way in, okay, to try to get these folks. Well, he's, he's on the board. He's not new. He's been on the board for the last, what, six months, eight, mm -hmm. eight months? Anyway, so we're looking we're looking for him to help us pry that, pry that place open. Yes. I think the other thing is that we do go into the schools. At least Rich and I go into the uh, elementary schools. Yep. And we've been working with uh, Portsmouth Maps, um, looking at what the teachers need, because that's the way to really connect. Look mm -hmm. at what they need. Right. And so if they're retired teachers or people that like to work with kids, there are lots of things that we can do going into the schools and, and really get the kids involved that way. Yeah. I think it's a, it's a lot of goodwill. Well, Tim is instrumental in this, this trivia contest we had. Mm -hmm. And now we're, we're already talking about maybe something in, around Halloween or something. We'll, we'll get the word out on that when that comes to fruition. Any final comments, questions from anyone? Okay, since we, this is a formal meeting, I will ask for a motion to adjourn. Second? Second. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Thank you all for coming. We have refreshments downstairs. Enjoy.